Jesus spoke to them in parables. A parable is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson is told by Jesus in the gospel. Literally, the word parable means a riddle. There are stories that leave the listeners with the responsibility of figuring out just what they mean. Jesus told about 40 parables during his ministry, and he only explained one of them to his disciples. He left a lot of them trying to figure out what to do. And Jesus took the answer with him when he ascended to heaven. So we are now nearly 2,000 years later, still pondering these parables, still pondering what Jesus could have meant when he told the story of the parable prodigal son or the good Samaritan. People who write about these things say that we cannot comprehend the parables of Jesus until we can see ourselves in the story. We see ourselves in the story, then finally we get them. The story of the prodigal son. Perhaps you're the hot-headed, snooty son who took off with his father's money and wasted everything. Then you come home and the father welcomes you with welcome arms. Perhaps you are the father welcomes your son home. Put yourself in the story. When it happens to you, you'll understand it. Or the good Samaritan. Why did the other ones pass by? How many times if you could have helped somebody, you saw somebody who needed help, neighbor or somebody else, and you never bothered, you walked by. Or perhaps you were the man lay, lying in the ditch. Perhaps you're sick, and you're expecting people to help your family to help you, and then help comes from some un, un, unexpected source. We never know. When we put ourselves in the story, we understand them, hopefully. We get the meaning. The second parable today tells us the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. It says the mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds and it grows and the birds come and put their branches. We know now the mustard seed is not the smallest seed. They say an orchid seed is the smallest. Anyway, that doesn't matter. <laughs> what could Jesus have been saying? That the church from these few people that he instructing a few of the apostles, the church is growing into something big and huge. Perhaps that's what he means. What do we mean when we say the kingdom of God? What's the kingdom of God like? The kingdom of God, if you will, is a place where each of us has a part to play in God's work. The kingdom of God is a place where each of us needs to cooperate with God's to build a new world, to try to create a world where there's peace, where there's no poverty, where there's justice. That's our job. And each and every one of us are to plant seeds, plant seeds in our family, in our community, and hopefully they will grow. Back in the mid-50s, in Alabama, there was a black woman, Rosa Parks. She was a seamstress and she was tired after a day's work and she was going home on the bus. And a white man got on the bus and she was told, listen, you gotta move back further. These seats are reserved for whites. And I guess she had enough. She said, no. They called the police handcuffed her, took her to jail. There was a tremendous reaction. Martin Luther King got involved and they 
bombed his house and set it on fire. But all the blacks said, we're not going to ride the buses anymore. The buses are going by basically empty. And the civil rights movement started. And after some years, uh, the Constitution of the United States would change, that it was unconstitutional the way the blacks were being treated. Dr. King, and he says, to thank him for starting the civil rights movement, he said, I didn't start it. Rosa Parks planted the seed that day when she said, I've had enough. We have the Vincent de Paul Society. Frederick Ozenham was a professor at a university in Paris. He was a great defender of the Catholic faith. And people said to him, the non-believers, you're talking from your head. What about your heart? What about the poor and the lonely, the forgotten? And something happened to him. A seed was planted in his heart. And now he had to reach out to the poor, take them food and help, and go and bring them companionship. Because we are hungry not only for food, we're hungry for acceptance and loneliness. And we know the Vincent de Paul Society has grown to be a worldwide organization. Those are just two examples. Our church, though, that we live in here in Canada is a troubled church. The last census in 2021 tell us that the number of people who profess to be Christians has dropped from 70% down to about 50%. Those millennials, you know, under, people under 35, basically none of them belong to any kind of organization or plant everything. And I'm told that here in the Archdiocese of Halifax, Yarmouth, you're probably only getting about 10% of the people coming to Mass on a regular basis. Yes, we baptize people, we confirm them, but what happened? Are we not planting the proper seed in their heart? Remind me of these three priests. They had a church, and the bats got into the church. How are we going to get rid of the bats? One fellow said, I lowered the temperature way down, and it got cold. You could grab the bats and take them out. So we did that. We took them 50 kilometers away, but they found their way back. The second fellow says, I got these mechanical owls and they flew around and scared them. They disappeared, but they weren't stupid. They were soon back. The third priest says, I'll tell you what I did. I called the bishop. He came and he confirmed them and I haven't seen them since. (laughs) Why do we, we confirm people? Sometimes we never see them again. Are we not planting the seeds properly? We're not planning the seeds properly. Gee, we, if we plant the seeds, we need to trust that Jesus will not disappoint us. Perhaps your pastor here, Father Malin, when he came up with the idea of planting the seed and his divine renovation, I don't think he had any idea that that seed was going to grow and going to spread around the world to many countries, but we know that's happening. His idea to renew the church. You know, as we heard in the second reading, we go by faith and not by sight. Yes, Jesus is calling us all to plant seeds, be kind and gentle with your family, be people of prayer, give examples of prayer, reach out to the poor as best you can. The hope Jesus offers us for the future never disappoints if we trust in him. Historically, the church has had rough times. Six or seven centuries when the Muslim took over Egypt and Lebanon and all of these countries, Syria, where Catholic countries, Catholic, Catholicism disappeared. After the Reformation, people thought the church was going to disappear. But 
men and women have planted seeds, have planted proper seeds which grew and the church continues. And we need to continue planting seeds. Yes, no matter how difficult the times may seem, we need to plant seeds and we need to trust that Jesus will bring them to maturity. Let us ask ourselves then, are we planting seeds that we hope will grow to build a new and better church?